My name is India Hill Brown, and I'm the author of The Girl in the Lake. There's a girl in the lake. I hear her at night. She looks just like me. Sometimes I see her in the mirror. There's a girl in the lake, and she wants to take me down there with her. The Girl in the Lake follows the story of Celeste as she visits her grandparents' lake house for the summer, along with her brother and cousins. But as soon as she gets there, she realizes that things are not as they seem. She goes into her room, she hears voices, she sees something behind her shoulder. There is definitely something supernatural going on. Celeste has to figure out what this ghost wants before anyone else gets hurt. Look for my book, The Girl in the Lake, at your Scholastic Book Fair. It was the biggest party of the year, and I was stuck at home doing the worst chore ever, laundry. Then, the power went out, and I discovered a few of my friends were also stuck at home, but no one else was around. Five kids with no adult supervision and all the snacks our stomachs could handle? Amazing, right? Until we realized our parents weren't coming back. No one was. It's the end of the world, and I'm in my bathing suit. Look for it at your Scholastic Book Fair. shelter dog who just wants his freedom. Emmy, a lonely girl in foster care looking for a place to call home. And Red, a cat who's never needed anyone or anything beyond her own sharp wits. When Emmy and Max get lost in the woods, they aren't prepared for the dangers of the wilderness. Will Red be able to help them? Can these three friends survive their incredible journey? Find out in Bound for Home at your Scholastic Book Fair. In 1943, the Nazis invaded the city of Bratislava and took any Jews they could find. Hertha Myers was Jewish, but she was also deaf. She couldn't hear the soldiers when they came. She had to rely on her sister to be her ears. Signs of Survival is an amazing true story. Find it at your Scholastic Book Fair.
Hi, I'm Kiran Mala. I thought I was just an ordinary girl until everything changed on my 12th birthday. My parents disappeared, leaving nothing but a note and some rupees. A drooling Rakosh demon tried to eat me, but then I escaped on a winged horse. My parents always told me I was a real Indian princess they found in the River of Dreams, but I thought they were just being weird. Now I'm in another dimension battling demons, escaping the Serpent King, and solving ridiculous riddles on a quest to save my parents, the galaxy, and beyond. Hi, my name is Corden Gorman. Wait, can I get a restart? Hi, my name is Gordon Corman, and I'm the author of Restart. What if the worst kid in a whole school got a total do-over on his life? That's Chase Amber. He's basically a big jerk. He fully pushes people around. 90% of the kids in that school are terrified of Chase. And what happens is he falls off his roof. He's got one of those sort of low sloping ones. He lands on his head. He's okay, but he loses his memory. Total amnesia. But in the case of a kid like Chase, when you forget everything, one of the things you forget is what a big jerk you are. So will he ultimately go back to the kind of jerk and bully that he was before? Or is this his chance to restart his life and be a different kind of person? It's especially hard for Chase because the kids he gravitates towards now, the artsy crowd and the video club, they're the ones he bullied the most in his old life. He has to choose to be the new Chase. It really is a difficult thing to restart your life. Obviously, Chase's situation is pretty unique. Not that many of us are formal bullies who fall off the roof and get amnesia. How awesome would it be to get a total do-over at your life? You want to find out, you've got to read Restart. Look for Restart at your Scholastic Book Fair. Hi, I'm Alan Gratz, the author of Ground Zero. September 11th was a brilliant fall day in New York City. The sky was bright blue, it was cloudless, the air was crisp. It was a gorgeous day. Ground Zero is the story of the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks. It's told from the point of view of two different kids. The first is nine-year-old Brandon. He is in the North Tower of the World Trade Center on September 11th when the first plane hits. He has just gotten into the elevator and he's about 20 floors away from the top of the building when boom, the whole building shakes. A plane has flown into the building just above him and now Brandon has to try and figure out how he is going to survive and see if he can save his dad. The other story that's woven in with Brandon's is that of Reshmina. She is 11 years old, she lives in Afghanistan, and she is suffering through her own version of 9-11 in the present day as her village becomes a battleground between the United States and the Taliban who are still fighting a war in Afghanistan because of what happened on September 11th, 2001. For years, young readers have been asking me to write a book about 9-11. The way it impacted me and almost every American that I know, it's made 9-11 really difficult to, to think about and talk about and remember. Brandon and Reshmina are two kids who believe they are strong enough to meet any challenge, and they are strong characters. But what they learn is that sometimes the world is too much for you to deal with on your own. And what you have to do is you have to find friends, you have to find allies, you have to come together as a community and overcome challenges together. Everybody remains strong individually, but sometimes we need help. And, and that's really, I think, one of the ultimate messages of Ground Zero is that it's not, it's not me against the world. It's, it's all of us working together to overcome everything that the world can throw at us. Look for my book, Ground Zero, at your Scholastic Book Fair.
change our fate. The subjects are gone. We've given these children all the tools to overcome their criminal DNA. Dr. Hammerstein, the clones have escaped. They've never meant to be unleashed. A group of kids crashes in a strange land that shouldn't exist. And now they must fight to survive. The natural leader. The brooding loner. The oldest and strongest. The detached genius. Who will make it out alive? Read the book, then play the Horizon game.